Let's catch up now with the Shadow Finance Minister, Senator Jane Hume, who joins me live from Melbourne. Good to talk to you, Jane. Uh, first up, let me offer you the chance to pass on your congrats to uh, Anthony Albanese and Jodie Hayden. Which I'm very happy to do. Of course we wish the Prime Minister and Jodie every happiness. I think this is lovely news and, you know, broken in such a sort of traditional way. I did see comments on social media from one wag that asked whether the Prime Minister had, like he had done with The Voice, whether it was a modest proposal. I thought that was quite funny. But, uh, yeah, look, I think it's just terrific news. So a wedding is always good news. Yeah, maybe she got a clue when he gave her one of those yes T-shirts to wear out to dinner. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but, yeah, we, we wish them all the best. Now, on to politics. I want to start off on the economy today. Unemployment ticking up to 4.1. That's the highest it's been for two years. It's higher than when Labor took office. Obviously, historically, it's not exceptionally high, but it is a worry that the economy is starting to slow, that people are starting to hurt, and it's a matter of where this goes in coming months, whether, whether we do get a soft landing or we crash this economy and too many people end up out of work. Look, it is a concern. There's now 581,000 Australians that are out of work. This should not be a surprise. We know that the Reserve Bank Governor warned that this would potentially be the case. And unless we can inject our economy with uh, productivity enhancing reforms, unless we can get economic growth moving again, well, I think we can expect more of this to come. The scary part of this data today, though, is the fact that that low unemployment that we've been experiencing in the last few few years has really been the only comfort to Australians during Labor's cost of living crisis. Should the cost of living crisis remain and it looks like that inflation is staying higher for longer, that interest rates are going to stay higher for longer because of the decisions the government is making, if inflation stays higher for longer, if the cost of living crisis continues on and there's a much higher chance that you'll lose your job, I think that that is something that Australians should be, should be worried about. Yeah, just on this, I think the only thing we need in this economy, the only way to have sustained economic growth is to lift productivity. And so this is a really, really bad time, as if there's ever a good time, to bring in these new industrial relation laws that are going to make it harder to boost productivity, harder to employ people. That's exactly right, and we've heard that too from the Reserve Bank Governor, that injecting productivity back into the economy is the only way that we're going to have sustainable wage rises that aren't inflationary. Unless we can get energy prices down, unless we can have flexible workplaces where uh, bosses are encouraged to employ more people, unless we can cut red tape, and unless we can have a tax system that incentivises people to get out there, take on that extra job, take the promotion, whatever it might be, take on the extra hours, unless we got those things and we're, t we're turbocharging productivity, we're going to end up with what we've seen, which is essentially economic growth at a standstill. In fact, we're in a per capita recession right now. The only thing that is keeping economic growth in the positive territory is that Ponzi scheme of extraordinarily high inflation, high immigration levels. And that is entirely unsustainable. So we need to see more work done at the productivity level, not these regressive industrial relations laws and the unwinding of taxation reforms that would encourage people to take to have a go and get out there in the workforce and, and, and take that promotion. 